Hi, uh, this is RJ Shea. I'm here at the St. Louis Artist Guild in Clayton tonight. I'm with our guest presenter, Art Moss, who's a creative. He's uh, retired. Art, uh, you've been in the business for a million years, it seems like. Yeah, I have. You know, 35 or more, and then been retired and, you know, do a little bit of teaching and seminars and, uh, you know, just keep my hand in the business, I guess, more or less, you know. Art, uh, you probably don't remember this. When I was young, getting into the business, and I was interviewing, you were out at Merritt's uh, Motivation for a while, right? right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I came out, showed you my portfolio, and Art gave me two orders right away, <laughs> which I was really excited about. He said, "Get out and stay out." <laughs> so tonight, <laughs> you were talking about the whole idea of this uh, this presentation tonight was talking about how to be creative. Right. Yeah. You know, how to how to get your creative ideas down and uh, how to organize your thought process. Uh, it's not about the finished piece. It's about how quickly and creatively uh, you can get a, a, a an idea down on paper that you can present to a client. And uh, don't be afraid of making mistakes. You know, uh, failure is not an option. Uh, failure is just a learning process of how to do it better the next time, you know. I would call you an old school creative. You look at yourself that way? Yeah, I do, because uh, the old disciplines that we had back then, uh, I'm prior to the computer, and uh, I have my dislikes for the computer, uh, because I went to school to learn how to draw, how to paint, and how to think. And uh, today, there don't seem to be a lot of that going on, you know. Uh, there's not the top professional that there used to be in the heyday in the art era of St. Louis. You know, um, they don't exist, uh, you know, just because the younger generation is into the computer and uh, really hasn't spent any time learning the whole process of the creative era, you know. Now, your background, you started off, I mean, you've been some big places in your career. You were at uh, Sticks, Baron Fuller. You were at Emerson Electric. You were at uh, McDonnell Douglas. You worked with astronauts. You right. did stuff on the very first, was it the Mercury program? I had worked on Gemini, Gemini, and I worked on the Skylab program, dealt with the astronauts, uh, you know, laid out the airplanes for the bottom half of the Thunderbirds and had that painted. I did a lot of things uh, because I volunteered for it. You know, uh, too many people get hung up on, oh, I don't know if I can do that or I don't, you know, I don't want to be a failure at that. I mean, everything is can be a challenge, but it can be fun, too, at the same time. So I moved around a lot, learned a lot of things. And the main thing I learned was from the, the professionals that were sitting next to me. I was always looking over their shoulder if... If their work was selling, I was copying what they were doing, so I could my pieces would sell. And uh, today, kids don't do that. They want to do their own thing, and they don't want to learn from the old guys. But the old guys have already made the mistakes that they're going to have to make again. So it's like, hey, you better pay attention to the old guys because they know what they're talking about. You know, you, know, you sound like a father. Uh, that sounds like human nature, you know. Yeah. Uh, I tell my students the same thing. I said, listen to what I'm telling you right now because right. in 10 years you're going to say, boy, I wish I would have listened to what he was saying. Right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, most, most kids, uh, they don't want to listen to their fathers, but at the same time they know their father's right. They just don't want to admit it, you know. And the students are the same way, you know. I, I've had students that uh, are so energetic, they just want to jump right into what I'm talking about. And then I have students that uh, they'd rather bury their head in, uh, in texting somebody while I'm giving a presentation. And, you know, to be real honest with you, I'm hardcore about some of this stuff. If you're not a professional, I don't want you in my business. I mean, uh, it's simple as that. I mean... You, you know, the hackers of the world, uh, they, I, I don't need them there. You know, I only want the top people, and we have fun. The top people learn the business. They have fun creating things and doing things. Um, you know, nobody wants to go to a C student doctor. You know, you always want the top doctor. Well, I was always the same way. I only want people working for me that are A, a students and top of the field. And that's just my own personal take on it. Uh, you know, you don't get good quality work if if the guy is struggling, you know. And uh, so, you know, hey, put put the work in, do the work, and uh, 
you'll you'll be rewarded down the road you know and take your chances you know don't be afraid to volunteer you know and and do things that you've never done before because somebody before you has done it so there's no reason why you can't do it this guy's an inspiration i can tell you that uh having seen him work professionally through the years and then you're doing the teaching i would love to be in your class and uh say um speaking of which uh aren't you a Award-winning power lifter as well? Yeah, yeah. I won the Senior Olympics for uh, seven years in a row in the, th- th- uh, the three uh, areas, uh, bench press, leg press, and arm curls. And, uh, you know, I actually set a couple of national records at it. And, uh, you know, it's just putting a goal out there and accomplishing it. You know, I, I've had some hard problems prior to that and this was a goal for me to get back in better shape and uh, move on you know you don't seem to be the typical creative i mean you're tough as nails yours what we call uh my parents would call small potato hard to peel <laughs> you know you're a tough guy and that that doesn't seem to be like that creative sort of uh prototype that we think about well you know i I've had bosses already that were afraid of me, just my <laughs> physical, you know, makeup. And there's no reason for that. I mean, I'll listen to you. I'll, I'll uh, side with you at times. Uh, um, I think I got a, a kind heart. And, uh, but when you're wrong, you're going to hear about it. You know, I mean, uh, and you don't have that today. I mean, uh, too many of the creative people let people slide and get by with things uh you're a teacher you know you know you you see it you know hey does the guy deserve a b or do you give him a c and tell him hey you know you know you need to do better you know uh chances are you're just going to move them on you know and to some extent that can be good but on other hands uh i've recommended people that work for me that didn't quite fit in I recommend they go somewhere else, and I would actually help them get a, a different job. They have actually came back and thanked me for moving them on or getting them out of the direction they were going because it wasn't working for them. So, you know, uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't, you know. Our business has changed dramatically in the last 15, 20 years from what it used to be. I mean, you had to be a journeyman for years to learn various techniques to even get a job, first of all. And now everybody thinks that they're an artist. Yeah, uh, they're not. I mean, uh, there's so many things that you have to learn uh, and the tricks of the trade, uh, you know, the disciplines, you know. People are creative directors for a reason. They just don't, you just don't automatically give somebody those titles. They earned them. They, they know how to get things done. They're quick with their creative ideas. They're quick at execution or production or whatever the, the process might be uh, versus another guy that's an art director that can't make it to the next step. Uh, you know, there's things that they have to learn, and if, if they're not willing to learn them, well, you're, you're kind of stuck at what you're doing, which can be fine for some people. Some people don't want to be the creative director. They, they just want to take a project and do it, and that's fine, but that never was my goal. Uh, you know, I always... First of all, it's all about money. I mean, uh, you're working. Ideally, people used to say, oh, it must be great to sit around and draw and paint and do all these things. I says, no. I says, it's a job. I says, I do it for money. I just happen to like what I'm doing. There you go. You know, and I think that's true of all of us, especially the older guys. We love what we're doing, and we love making money at it, too. Yeah. Finally, where do you think our business is going these days? What's the future look like to you, in your opinion, based on what you're watching happening right now? Well, the the problem I see and the reason I stay in the business, even though I've been retired for a long time, uh, is to keep in touch with the, the young creative people coming along and try to try to understand where they're going and how they think they're going to get there and that. But too many of these kids they get a computer in their hand and they go oh i want to be a gamer i want to design games and they don't real they're not looking down the road knowing that hey there's probably only six people in the profession that that are the top gamers that produce all the games and you're never going to break into it because there's 10 million other kids thinking the same thing you got to find your niche and what you're good at and then you have to develop it and what i see today is 
these kids don't have any direction in that. They, they don't know what they're good at. They don't know how to go about it. And, you know, I try to bring to, to them at least how to get to their creative endeavor and uh, their creative process and give them examples of where things come from and how you get it down on paper. But um, too many of them rely on the computer and pulling things up on a computer and, oh, change it to green and it's fine and, oh, look what I did. And that ain't the answer, you know, I mean, and... Uh, you know, we, we we try to teach. I, I try to give my seminars to to the design and illustrating classes. And, uh, you know, the teacher's stuck in most cases with they have to give out grades. But I don't have to give you a grade, and I don't have to hold back on what I think about your work either. Yeah. <laughs> What a tough one, baby. Uh, Listen, we need to sit down another t time to talk for a lot longer about right. some some, uh, some philosophies when it comes to teaching. Well, I, I'll be glad to uh, give my seminar to your classes, and, uh, you know, we, we can talk about that because, you know, there, there are so many teachers out there today that aren't looking at the creative process. It's, it's like if you take art appreciation or art history, uh, they're still teaching uh, – well, he lived at this state and he died at this state, but they're not getting into what the guy really accomplished in his career or lifetime. And uh, the more they they get into the creative of people and understand it or, or learn from it, you know, we can get away from the history of, you know, well, Picasso and when he lived and died and why he painted with blue and, you know, all the terminologies they give you when you walk through an art museum that are totally wrong. You know, I mean, if you follow the people around giving the talks about Picasso and the Blue Period, they have to understand that, hey, it was the only, they were at war. The only color you could get was blue, you know, so that was his Blue Period. There, there's no rhyme or reason why he painted in blue. It's the only thing he could get his hands on to paint with, you know. So, you know, they have to teach that. They don't teach that. You you pick that up at going to museums and listen to other people talk or get with somebody that really understands art history, but just to teach dead presidents' names and, you know, oh, well, he lived in the 1600s, died here, and, uh, you know, that's about it. Nobody wants to hear that anymore, and nobody cares. You know, it's like, let's get to the creative, you know. Why Why was there cubism, you know, uh, things like that, and, you know, what were they trying to do? Basically, they're copying off each other and trying to outdo one another. That's what was happening but it ain't presented that way. Well, I was afraid we weren't going to get you to be able to talk, talk tonight. Yes. Uh, I thought that maybe, you know, you'd be a one a monosyllabic uh, oh, speaker go, tonight. I can go on and on, but uh, I, I am really excited about the younger generation. I keep my hand in it so that at least I stay up on it and, and, and I'm interested in it. And it keeps me young and keeps me active and, I like to see is inspiring young guys coming along that are excited about what they're doing because I lived through the, the best era in St. Louis in the art field, and so have you. Yeah. And uh, we had fun. You know, we worked our ass off, but we had fun. And uh, these new kids have to get to that era. You know, they got to create their own era and, and get the fun and the excitement out of it. Otherwise, it's a really rough profession. Well, you were more fun than a barrel of art directors tonight, and I want to thank you uh, for right. coming tonight. Ah, ah, oh, hey. <laughs> Thanks, Art. And this right. is RJ signing off with the St. Louis Artist Guild. Thanks for coming.